everybody, this is LVA Toro Fancy Action Now. It is a um, morning. <laughs> it is morning, and um, I wanted to talk about um, so many things. I want to talk about Destiny 2 is irrelevant, pretty much. I want to talk about one of my viewer requests, which is the end of single player. Uh, do I feel that it is the end of single player uh, with this push? Uh, let's talk about, but I'll tell you what, we're going to talk about in this first section, we're going to talk about EA's decision to kill Dead Space <laughs> and Visceral Games. So Visceral Games used to be... Um, Electronic Arts Games it used to be a studio of, of Electronic Arts that became Visceral Games. Uh, and they really threw a lot of money at them to make Dead Space. I think anybody who is a, first of all, anybody who's played it, let alone a fan, and I am both, realized that they were playing something special when they pl played the first Dead Space. The second Dead Space kind of just jacked everything up to 11 but the original Dead Space really had you nervous. I mean, really had you anxious to walk into a room. And the jump scares in that game, to me, in just quantity of jump scares, quality jump scares, was second to none. Second to none. I mean, it was an outstanding game. So a moment of silence for Dead Space. We'll have some dead air for dead space. Okay. EA canceled it right before Halloween. And <laughs> something tells me that's almost like uh, there there's room to even there's room to discuss and I'm not saying this was the intent. But there's room to discuss why they canceled it right before Halloween and closed that studio. It's almost like EA saying, you know what? You're not going to support Andromeda. You're not going to provide the revenue for us to funnel money to Visceral Games to create another dead space. Okay. We'll just close Visceral right before Halloween. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But man, it's darn synchronistic that they kill their horror survival uh, franchise um, edifice of game enjoyment, an actual creative piece of work where they gave the studio the funds and the freedom, that's what it is, the funds and the freedom to create a masterpiece like Dead Space. And Dead Space will forever stand as a high quality survival horror adventure in space with i mean just threads of uh, of every classic horror trope vibe resi 4 aliens i mean those are some of the founda foundational pillars of that game but so many others uh, where it is just absolutely, it was absolutely unique. It was absolutely, um, although it did derive, it wasn't derivative. It did derive a great, took a, took a great many cues. Uh, but it was the, the HUD, the HUD, the HUD system, where it's all visual right there. It's all like in real time. It's all indicative. It's all shown on the character. Uh, and it's been done in lesser forms, you know, in isolated forms and in different ways. But uh, it was really a synthesis of a great many things. And uh, it was done superbly well. Um, I regularly play Dead Space, but there's nothing like. And please share this. If you're a gamer who likes to share their experiences, please share your Dead Space experience in the comments. Because the first time I played that thing, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. I bought it originally just to support the franchise and that type of game because I enjoy that type of game. But that was the one, I think probably the singular time where when I purchased a game that my expectations were exceeded on nearly all levels, on, on all levels. I mean, it was just, 
that game frightened me. That game had me nervous just to move around and, you know, I never knew and I, I wasn't quite sure, like, you know, is it dead, isn't it dead? I mean, think about that. The very first time you played Dead Space, I mean, there were times where you, you, I would just curb stomp something. I remember one time I, I, I shot it, it fell down, you know, and I curb stomped it once and the thing got back up. And I'm like, man, I like curb stomped everything in that game, uh, you know, until I'm like, that thing is dead. <laughs> it, do it doesn't even have the component parts to operate anymore. I mean, any game that makes you do that. And, you know, that bat figure that kept creating those, like, hyper zombies, uh, the black ones, where it was just like, they were just like twice as fast and twice as strong and, or three times as strong. I mean, they took a lot, they just sucked up the ammo to the point where I was like ammo poor constantly. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I mean, literally, you're, you're like, wait, wait a minute, don't create another one. Oh, it's gonna create another one. Oh my God, you know, and you gotta, I'm like, I gotta kill that thing. And by the time I got to it in that room with the morgue, and uh, and finally killed that thing. It had gotten around all of them, man, and it did it fast. I'm like, holy crap! And when I was done with that, I was like, almost dead, no ammo, and it was just like, I was just like, uh, you know, <laughs> with that feeling of isolation and hopelessness. I know these are all like negative emotions, but it's like that game really puts you in there that that game really gets to you and that first playthrough man i can't one thing i regret is i could never go back and experience that first playthrough because man i'm like this game is scary loved it loved it it was like the ultimate high-tech horror um haunted house high-tech haunted house it was the ultimate high-tech haunted house and uh props to visceral games Dead Space is not dead, though. They own the name, they own the franchise. And again, Visceral is a casualty of the failure of Andromeda. Because if Andromeda was making all that money and all the DLC and all that stuff, if Andromeda was making that money, and their projections were up, they would have the money to throw at Visceral for another swing at Dead Space. But as it stands, they basically waited until Halloween to cancel that. Almost as if, almost as if, they are letting their fans know, well, you like that? You like that little boutique franchise of high quality survival horror where we could have potentially gone back to the roots of the original game and and pleased all the fans? Well, you tarred and feather, feathered us in the public arena with Andromeda. And, and believe me, I was one of them and we totally did. We tarred and feathered them. What you have to remember is EA has the power to take these licenses that we enjoy and to end them, which they do quite often. So when they couldn't turn Dead Space 3 into a casino, which they desperately tried, they butchered that game based on incremental revenue. I mean, that's what it is. It's incremental revenue. Um, they could have been smart about it. It was, it was a little heavy-handed in two. But they took the sledgehammers. The board of directors was handed sledgehammers. And they took the code of that game and literally battered it with incremental revenue. Or, and and just, just micro... Call it microtransactions if you want to make it sound better. It's incremental revenue and it's turning that franchise into a casino. That was a rape of any in, uh, creative integrity that the, that game might have had. Uh, it was destroyed in uh, Dead Space 3. Now, did I play Dead Space 3? I'm a fan of Dead Space, and I played it. I purchased it, and I played it. I purchased it used <laughs> for a few dollars. And played through it, and it was all right. The, 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 the back and forth go between between the two Romeos tiresome tiresome i'm like isaac clark does not care 
about this guy's... I mean, he's like this unstoppable killing machine of necromorphs like no other. And then he's like a a wide-eyed, weepy lover, uh, you know, jilted lover. I'm like... <laughs> wow, you really saw EA put their hand in that. Because that thing, that... that <laughs> That part of the story was totally annoying. It was completely annoying. And I don't know if there was some psychology involved there where you're the character and he's like the tall, authoritarian, jealous, kind of like angry dad figure there and you're supposed to like purchase more stuff to like better, you know, to prove how much better you are. I don't know if there was some kind of like, it's kind of like sidebar psychology in, in that scenario. It certainly didn't work on me. I was just like, Wow. So, I did not buy any additional anything for that game. I just played it as it was and uh, disappointed in the story. Uh, gameplay was, you know, good, but it was just like, I don't know. It just, it was okay. <laughs> it was like a B minus game to me, you know. And uh, so, you know, I played it. I own it. Uh, Dead Space 1, I mean, epic. Dead Space 2, I've played through that quite a number of times. But, don't fear. Dead Space will be back. They will reanimate that corpse, believe it, under a new studio. But right now, they're pulling in all the expenses to shore up their end of year. Because think of, from a business perspective, I want you to think about this. And believe me, businesses do sometimes do things that are petty and vindictive to their own clients. I know. I worked for one. And there are times where they will shaft the customers because they're irate about this or that, the way things turned out. It does happen. So, but they can't, they canned Visceral in fourth quarter because they have to report their end of year and they can show that as a reduction in expense to keep the value of their stocks high. There are a couple things that raise the value of a company's position, and please remember EA is a corporation, and they are literally a corporation in spirit. Yes, you know, so there are some companies that operate uh, for for select reasons, uh, but they have the spirit of a of a like a niche company or an indie developer. Um, EA is completely corporate. I mean, they 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 that's how. That's how it's easy to predict some of their reactions because corporations behave in very specific ways. And one of the very specific ways that they do is regardless if they see an expense, regardless of the people, the artistry of what they create or the, the previous successes or the commitment they have to the company or to the projects, doesn't matter to a corporation. Is it an expense right now? Is it generating revenue right now? Can we eliminate it and boost our stock value and reduce our expenses for the end of the year? Yeah? Get rid of it. We'll hire them back or not or, you know, whatever. We own the property. We'll do as we wish. Okay? And, and, and what they do is they release new properties to boost stock investment. Speculation. But the surer, and this is the key, the surer way, and this is what investors really like, because it's a guarantee, when you cut expenses, you immediately get all that cash flow back into the company and it boosts your stock value, not in a speculative way, but in a firm way. It's a it's a real way. You you basically said this. This studio costs us, you know, probably it, it might be, you know, it might be 500,000 a month or a million a month. Literally, I mean, maybe, maybe quite more than that. Let's just say it's a million a month. This studio costs us a million a month, 12 million a year just to operate. Not even what they produce. I mean, just to fill the coffee cups and power the PCs and clean the cubicles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is a million dollar a month operation at this office. Rents, everything. We can just close it tomorrow because they have the power to do it. They own it all, that's the thing. They own it in com in, in totality. So they, they, they can just say, hey, we're closed today. Forever, goodbye, thank you. 
Thank you for your service. Here's a nice letter. <clears throat> you can keep the company mug. See you later. And that is going to immediately lift their financial position. Because now they can say, wow, okay, we just eliminated um, you know, 12 million annual in expenses. Not mention payroll, right? So payroll, benefits, everything. They save themselves a ton of money and they don't care about the studio or the people or the, the property. They own the property, they own, they own the name, the license for Dead Space and everything else. They can reanimate that anytime they want. They can create a new studio and call it like, you know, uh, badassery of games, you know, <laughs> and tomorrow and say, hey, you want your job back? Or, hey, you got some new talent? We're going to throw you on Dead Space. You in? Oh, yeah, you're in. So there you go, man. They have that flexibility. They can close that down, save all that money in the fourth quarter, boost their stock position, and they get ready to reinvest into the new year. And so that's gonna lift their fourth quarter and their year, and it's gonna help them offset the loss of Andromeda. Because that studio wasn't gonna have a property ready for release in Q4. The board or and or the management team, the senior management team said, get rid of it. Are they gonna have a game ready for Christmas release or holiday release? No? Out. We want all that money back. They're not going to roll through and pay for that studio for uh, for no game in fourth quarter. Not this year. Not after Andromeda. Now, if Andromeda was a, a budget success, because it was a budget game, if that was a budget success and that cash was still flowing off the DLC and the microtransactions and all that, and it's not. It's dead. That game is dead. DOA. That game was dead in its first month, and they had planned revenues into next year. They had planned at least two years of revenue and additional DLC. Remember I said in my original video on the very subject, that revenue stream, those revenue streams have been cut. So they looked at their expenses, and they said, "Does what studios have a property ready to go for fourth quarter that's going to add money to our bottom line? Do you have something ready to go? You've been on project. Is it ready to go? No? See ya. That's it. I mean, again, that's a corporate move. They still own Dead Space. They still own all the license. Just because Visceral Studios is gone does not mean there will not be another Dead Space. In fact, I guarantee there will be another Dead Space. It is a n notable property, it is a notorious game, it is an infamous game in good and bad ways, and it will, and that means brand recognition. That means that that game, and it's zombies, you can call it what you want, it's zombies, zombies are still big. They will rest that for a little bit, they will cross over fourth quarter, then they will begin to build a team or, uh, uh, to, to explore the next Dead Space and believe it and wait for a remaster. Again, budget move. They can come out with a Dead Space remaster, all three games, all DLC. Please don't uh, pull up a Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare. Uh, and um, I'll buy it. I'll tell you right now, EA, you come out with a Dead Space remaster, all DLC, all equipment packs and, and outfits and all this stuff, great. And if you want to put in DLC for additional levels in the, in the, in the vein of one and or two, I'll buy that too, because I'm a Dead Space fan and it will return. Won't be visceral doing it, but again, to EA, they don't care. They don't care about that. They can hire the talent whenever they want. So that's my post-mortem of Visceral Games. I've been wanting to do it, and everybody else has been doing it, but uh, it's an important game to me, so I wanted to do it. Um, there you go. I'm going to make a few more, and you're going to see more stuff. Don't worry about it. Peace. I'm not going to do the kissing anymore. That, that was it. Yeah.